Welcome to Decker Tech. I'm Aaron Decker, and today we're doing a Thorns run. Uh, this is, was the requested for the first playthrough. Uh, it is not a run that I find the, what shall I say, the most uh, successful. But what we're going to be looking to do is try to win with Thorns. And since I can... Thorns always turns into Thrones, what can I say? Um, so when we're trying to make a run around something, you got to either pick the character, pick the card, pick the idea, and kind of go browse, see what your idea and game plan is going to be. So when we look through Thorns, we find that Warriors and Scouts, Warriors have the most, for sure, 100% Warriors. Scouts have a little bit, and then there's nothing in Mage Dealers. So the team comp I want to build around, I'm going to need to build pretty deep into Warriors and or Scouts because of this reason. Now, also, uh, when we go look at perks and stuff, which aren't here on one of the tabs, which is, you know, it should be. Uh, if we were to go look at the perks of any given hero, we could also look there for our inspiration on how to build the team. So, for thorns, I know how to find thorns on the screen. It's right here. Thorns, the option is... Uh, we can either, they don't lose charge when hit, that's pretty straightforward, turn it to holy damage, or it applies poison. Well, for a pure thorns run, I really feel it should be thorns damage. Holy damage might be an option as a holy thorns build, but honestly, the holy resistance is worse than the piercing resistance uh, currently in applying it to the team. And with that, let's talk about thorns. So the damage calculation for all the other effects involves buffs on yourself debuffs on the enemy stuff like that thorns doesn't work that way the only thing that affects thorns damage is the amount of thorn stacks you have on the target getting hit and the resistance of the person hitting them that is the only two factors so for us to do any sufficient amount of thorns damage we have to stack thorns really high and get resistances really low so we're really going to try to play around that resistance is really low part so that's why I think it's best that we're going to be keeping the thorns to piercing damage. Because if you check out Sylvie here, we've got, not perks, talents. I know how to do this. Stats right here. Keen Sight. Sight on the enemy also reduces the resistances by 0.5 per charge. So if we have Sylvie on the team, then the ways that we can reduce uh, piercing damage is going to be vulnerable, sight, and that's it. <laughs> Vulnerable and sight. That's the only debuffs we get to play with. Vulnerable, sight, and thorns. That's that's all we get. But another nice thing about Sylvie is uh, we can we can put target shooting. This doesn't do any damage. Uh, so this this is a for my mentality of a pure thorns run. Uh, this is viable and an option that we can we can play with here because it's going to reduce their resistances so that thorns takes they take more thorns damage. Uh, the reason I'm going no attacks is because once we start adding any sort of attacks into the build that's going to take over the monopoly of damage on the, the team like it's not really going to be a thorns build and for the challenge to feel secure in my mind it's it's got to be this hey i can only do thorns damage i will never hit you you will only ever hit me and that will do things for you you put yourself into the grave and we'll talk about how there's going to be some handicaps and some fights we have to avoid because of that but i think it's going to be a lot of fun I know it's going to be a lot of fun because I've done this before. I did it on Madness 11. We're going to be doing it on Madness 12. So, assembling the team. Uh, I now know that I want Sylvie on the team. But I'm going to have to remove every single one of these attack cards from her deck. Uh, and just make her a pure... I mean, we're going to have to remove the pet because the pet doesn't attack. We're going to remove all these, fill it with Sight and Thorns. Because that's the, Sight, Thorns, and Vulnerable. Those are the three key debuffs we're going to be building around. So, people that are good with Sight, Thorns, and Vulnerable, well... Bree's got some talents, which, ironically, we're not going to be picking up, go figure, uh, about thorns. And warriors, in general, are the best thorn builders. So, of our warriors, it's Bree, Grookly, Heiner, and Magnus. Well, Heiner's slow, and Grookly uh, is all about fury, and I don't want him bleeding himself for no reason. Because we can't get around the fact that uh, he will be getting two fury every turn. So, I don't want to manage Grookly's fury just for the sake of having another warrior on the team. And Heiner, Heiner would actually be pretty fun because Heiner has this unbreakable and could really be defensive to the team. So if I were to go three warriors, I'd definitely pick up Bree, Heiner, and Magnus. But I think it's going to be worthwhile to have Nesglicht on the team because we are building into Sight. So 
this site will help us keep the team healthy. It's also going to be nice just to have a healer in general to have access to heal spells. We're not going to really run many heal spells on Nezglik, and his starting deck is full of attack spells. Like, there are so many damaging things here that we will not be using. Um, so, I think Nezglik is a good fit to pick up. Also, Nezglik has the same kind of thing that Sylvie's got going on, where early on you can pick up a debuff, uh, an enchantment you can put on the enemy that says, hey, by the way, you have less resistances. So Nezglik can really help increase our Thorns damage that way. He's not going to be able to provide any Thorn stacks to the team, but his contribution will be healing the team, keeping them healthy, maybe some dispels, and lowering the resistances of the enemies. Uh, so with that, um, I've decided on a team comp. The order, I'm going to want someone in front that's going to take the most heat and someone in back that takes the most heat. Since I've got two warriors, those are going to be the two that I'm going to fit there. Bree starts with uh, five thorns. It's not a lot, but it's it's enough. So we're going to put her up front. She also has the starting cards of more spiked shields, which is going to be one of the few thorn cards we have available to us. So that's why she's going to go up front. So I got Bree in the front because uh, she's got more thorns. Magnus in the back because he starts with reinforce and the back line gets assassinated sometimes. And then Nezglik being the squishiest is in the safest spot here at three and Sylvie's at two. Turn order doesn't really matter for this team comp because three of them are likely to go before the enemy. And I really don't care about the order my team takes because none of them are buffing each other. There's no bless. There's no sharp. There's none of that going on that you'd see in my other team comps. There's a little bit of inspire going on, which is why Nezglek going last kind of sucks because he will be picking up some of the inspire. I think Nezglek and Bree have the most inspire of the four of these. But that's not enough for me to care about placement on the team, if that makes any sense. Uh, what else do we got to do prep-wise? Uh, perks. We got to go through perks. So I have done a little of the groundwork here. Hopefully this is still the same perks I had before. Yeah, so of the perks, everyone that has any thorns got the thorn things. So everyone except for Nesbite. And then one of us picked up the thorns does not decay on getting hit. That is a significant increase in our thorns damage just because of the fact that we get to keep our stacks. Early on, it's a big deal. Late game, it's not, it's not as much. Everyone's going to pick up some sort of vulnerable. Three of my teammates are going to be applying vulnerable, so it would be nice to have all three of these vulnerable uh, talents. And excuse me, this is going to be a little different than my normal videos because I'm going to be sitting here drinking. I'm going to take some moments to uh, clear my throat, stuff like that. I do have some some breathing concerns, so be, be aware of that. Be mindful. I appreciate your patience with that. Uh, so... Uh, if I could pick up five of these, I would, and have three of my teammates pick up this plus charges. But Sylvie is going to be the one not doing it, because Sylvie, although is going to be applying vulnerable consistently and has some vulnerable cards that uh, that stay in the deck, I just need someone else to pick up these other two because I need vulnerable to stack to twelve, and I need the slashing resistance, sorry, the piercing resistances to be reduced by a greater amount from the vulnerable. So I have to pick up these two. And so of my three that are applying vulnerable, I think the warriors are the best option because Howl is AOE and the Hunter's Mark or whatever she's doing. It's not Hunter's Mark, it's vulnerability or something like that is uh, is a card that will not be affected there. Uh, everyone's going to pick up more cards for their starting turn. None of these debuffs matter. None of these attacks matter because I'm not doing any of that. I don't need Fury. I don't need Powerful. Bree is not going to pick up plus block charges uh, simply because... Magnus should be able to cover it all by himself. Uh, uh, if you're running this, I don't. I mean, it's not a bad thing to pick up more block. I just, I'd rather have starting resources, I think. And I definitely want Bree to have max resistances. We'll come back to, this is where I put the leftover change most of the time. So we'll, we'll come back to this front page later. Uh, and then Mystical. So Nezglect is picking up the insane stacks because I increased his healing done. Nezglect is picking up regen because he will be applying some regen and both the warriors and Nezglect are going to be picking up this vitality because the more vitality the better. I actually need to make sure I need to change this. Sylvie needs to have vitality stacks too. So I think Sylvie I'm going to pick up the vitality and the regen. So let's go to her. And the reason I have this vitality increases mass XP by eight instead of five is if we decide with perks, not perks, here, talent cards, talent cards, queen of thorns. So if we decide to pick up Queen of Thorns, I don't think I will, then suddenly we need an alternate ways to keep Bree alive because we're relying on block for a majority of the game. And then suddenly we're going to remove that block option from Bree. So 
I got to figure out something else to do. So vitality is the next safest way to keep Bree alive in decently middle madness, mid high madness. So I'm probably not going to pick this up just because it's not that much of a thorns increase. Once we get to that point, we'll all kind of show you as, as we get there. But uh, we're going to leave our options open in case I decide to do so. And if that's the case, I want Vitality to be more effective for Bree than it is for normally. Uh, perks, we want Sylvie. I said I was going to change some perks here. So let's cut out some gold. And I need to pick up Vitality and Regen. Because Scouts, turns out, can be Bards. So we're going to turn Sylvie into a semi-Bard. She's going to be a, a prickly Bard, a thorny Bard, a, a stabby stabby Bard. Not a stabby Bard. We're not stabbing people. So there's some songs that apply Vitality and some that apply Regen, so we're going to pick those up. What else do we got here? Um, I don't need plus healing done on anyone. If I were to pick up plus healing done, it would be Nesglect. I don't think I'm going to rely on that. I think I'm just going to rely on Vitality and Regen. And if anything has plus healing on it, it's going to be a big spell that has a significant portion that's not really affected by the perks. If that makes sense. Like, so if it, if it has base 20, then adding another 10 is not going to be as big a deal as something that has base 0. So we're not going to play the base zero heals is what I'm getting at. Uh, and then general, I got as much shards as possible because it's going to be an expensive run. I'm going to be crafting some rares in the starting town. Uh, I want everyone to be super resistant. I think the only person that's not picking this up is Magnus, which is okay because Bree definitely needs um, max resistances because she's going to be front. And uh, it might be taking uh, that talent that says she can't block. And everyone else is going to pick up as much resistance as possible. I could be dipping some of this into health uh, for the early game for some of the squishier targets. But I think I'm fine where I'm at. Um, and then speed. Anyone that's applying fast. So Bree and Sylvie. Because Sylvie is going to have songs that apply it. And Bree has a item card and push forward. Uh, I could have Magnus pick this up as well. But I think having just Bree do it is fine. And then Magnus and Bree should both be picking up this. The reason I didn't pick this up on Bree... Is because Magnus is just going to have more of them. Uh, one moment. Pause in the recording. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is why we do not do live recordings and live streams in this area. Um, I am going to get us to the starting town and save us there because I am going to have to stop streaming now. Uh, I will be streaming again on Sunday. I will probably not do a live stream. Maybe I will just because I don't like to disappoint people. Uh, because, like I said, I got to step away from the uh, the computer for the weekend all of a sudden. Um, plus sight. Sight is going to be the only way that we're one of the few ways we're reducing vulnerability. So uh, that's going to be a big deal. Everyone's going to be picking up plus charges because all of us will be applying sight in some manner. We're all picking up energy. We're all picking up speed because we don't really care about our turn order. Everyone can go as fast as possible. And if I need to, I can speed up Nesglek because Nesglek's the slowest. Uh, Nesglek is picking up the buffer because that's a, a thing that healers do. And yeah, I don't need Mark because that doesn't affect Thorns damage. I don't need Stealth. doesn't affect Thorns damage. I actually don't want a stealth because then they can't hit me for thorn damage. Um, one strategy is I could have Sylvie and Nesglet go stealthy uh, so that Bree and Magnus are more likely to take hits because they're going to have more thorns. But that's that's a finesse that we don't have to worry about. And then everything else is coming into shards and gold. So, oops, cancel. Did I change? I made changes. I added, uh, I added regen and vitality. Yes, this is fine. Fine. And uh, yeah, that's the team madness wise. So I want to go. I don't want to get too crazy here because it's it's going to be a hard fight. I would like to remove the supply exchange so I can't find myself selling supplies for more uh, more resources. So I think basics is there good. And then on these ones, I'm going to remove resistant monsters just because it give us an easier time killing. Uh, with thorns because 15% resistance is a thing. Yes, I think I could do it without resistant monsters, like with resistant monsters enabled, but I want this to be a, a quick run, not a grindy run. And so the quicker the better. Uh, 
I think that means resistant monsters and restricted power need to come off. So that if I get above 200 stacks of thorns, I can kill Archon fast. And my monsters are not taking, you know, reduced thorns damage. So that's why we're at 12. I think I could easily go restricted power and resistant monsters and do 14. Uh, but once we start going up here, I think this gets harder and harder just because monsters have more health. And once you start getting monsters that can dispel or purge you, uh, bad things can happen. We definitely can't do base 8 with uh, without a lot of grinding because Stockade is a rare card that we're going to want to craft. There's a couple rare cards that are kind of integral to the team. And that's why I don't want to go to base 8. So base 6 plus 6 is, I think, where we want to be. And begin the adventure. Or I will just open up into the starting town, and then unfortunately I gotta cut the stream for now, and we'll go back to this at a future date. It also gives me a chance to check the recording, make sure I've made some changes to the setup here. So in this, um, basically, so I'm gonna have to give you a checklist of things I have to do in the order I'm gonna do them. I'm gonna replace Sylvie's pet right away, and then I'm going to do some divinations. And you'll see this in the next video, but I'm just gonna go over them now. I gotta replace this pet because that's part of my my little requirements i set for myself is no attacks and and harley is an attacking pet so we'll remove that then we will do some divinations of requirements we'll also check the shop see if there's any items we need right now what i'm seeing is maybe some plus charge this would be really good for magnus uh other than that uh combat start thorns sure why not maybe give that to brie for now or replace it later uh just kind of speed up the the first couple of combats of the game maybe buy a pet or two uh, then go do divination, spend the rest of my gold, because with a fully upgraded town, you don't need gold to remove cards at the church. I mean, I guess just having the first perk here is is what all you need to make that true for the first town. Uh, go to the cart, spend all my gold, run out of gold, and then start spending my shards. And I'm gonna start. I'm just gonna start going down the keywords. Keyword number one: thorns. I'm gonna go through, add all the thorn cards I think are applicable. I'm not gonna add any of these attacks. You can't see it. I'm pointing at the screen. I can't. Uh, I can't add any of these attacks because of the the rules I set for myself. So I'm gonna be adding stockades and barbed wires and stuff. And then I'm gonna go through the checklist for vulnerable. I'm gonna find all the vulnerables that aren't attacks. Add them to Bree, Magnus, and Silly. And then I'm gonna have to just start finding replacement cards for all these attacks in Nesglet and Sylvie. And so that's gonna be things like vitality or uh, regen, or dispel. Like these are the powerful keywords that I'm gonna be looking for. Uh, dispel is gonna have a lot of it, like the clarities, the detoxifies. These are the filler cards that I recommend for healers anyway, the, the healing reigns. These are just gonna be zero cost cheap filler cards for Nesglegd. And what's his gonna be his big spending cards? I think his big spending card is going to be the Vitalize. I'm gonna get a, a non-vanishing version of that. That kind of stuff. I'm going to look to balance out, try to get down to one or less on my average cost. Maybe some, uh, throw in some draw cards if I can afford them. Upgrade these expected prophecies so that I'm generating more cards into my hand. Uh, maybe uh, I can't apply bluffs because those are attacks. No can do there. Sylvie's going to have a lot of card draw and a lot of card management. I can add in traces for Sylvie to make my decks, my first turn a lot better for my team. That kind of stuff. And I'm going to replace all these quick shots, all these ice shots, all, all these bows and arrows. There's there's no bow and arrow. I'm just taking weapons away from my team. We are pacifist run. We're not attacking anyone. They're attacking us and paying for it because it's not nice. Yeah, uh, I'll do all that in the next uh, video. I apologize for having to step away so soon. This is why uh, we can't have nice things and I can't have a schedule for streaming yet. Because uh, my schedule is just too, uh, what's the word, unpredictable. And I will catch you later. Peace.